patient here. Yeah. He's got a big mouth. And no lower jaw. And no lower jaw. <laughs> it makes life very easy, doesn't it? So let's scan. Now, I'm going to hold this yeah. from behind, Patrick, yeah. just like this patient here, okay? So, one thing... The nice feature here is that since we've picked the tooth in the upper arch, it will automatically go to the upper jaw first. Yeah. Uh, and then it will let you fill in the others. Sometimes that's slightly frustrating because I like to numb up the patient, and while they're numbing up, I scan the opposing bite, and then I maybe go back to the upper jaw and cut out the area that we're going to do. Uh, so, just got to remember that if you pick a tooth on the lower, it will start with the lower jaw instead. Yeah. Now, something which you might remember if you ever used one of the original Omnicams, uh, or Blue Cam, or Red Cam in the original AC unit. When you had a keyboard, you could press space to wake up your scanner. We don't have a space bar. How do we wake it up? Give it a kick. Give it a kick. <clears throat> and it wakes it up. Okay? I didn't really kick it then. No. I just push the push button. Too good at it. No, I wouldn't do that. It's my baby. <laughs> okay? But the, there is a button underneath here. You can't see, but I'm lifting my leg and touching it yeah. very gently with my foot, not really giving it a kick. And that button, you just click gently, click it up and down, and it wakes it up and down. You can hear the clicking, I don't know if it can translate through, but you can hear how the scanner is starting to work, and you can hear the camera going. <laughs> yeah. And that's just because of the, the, the technology that's in the Prime Scan, similar to the Trio scanners, mm -hmm. where we've got a mirror inside, changing it so that it's picking up the, the, the difference in angulation. Now, another thing before we start scanning. What do we have over here, Patrick? Well, here we have additional catalogues and we have tools. So those two buttons are actually quite useful. Uh, you might have set it up like this and then you realize that, well, actually, I would like to have maybe a biocopy or at least a picture of the teeth as they were before, and then you can overlay that and see where we are. So you can add additional catalogues uh, and we get a whole list of them, uh, like the biocopy lower, the ginger mask, scan bodies, and this is where they all come in. Uh, and if you just set it up for a single crown, you can still go back and add one of these. So if you want to just have the teeth before you prepare them, maybe just pick the gingiva mask up here, and then we have the shape of them all. Um, yeah. And personally, I, I think it's good practice, I, I, the way I like to do it. I always take by a copy of the arch which I'm doing the prep on, no matter what. And the reason why is not to copy it, and don't select the copy, but I always keep a record of it. Yeah. Now yeah. I don't know what, wherever you're watching this, you know, they, they, they realistically might be looking at it and go, well, I could do what I want here. It doesn't really matter, nobody's gonna come and knock me yeah. down with a three letter word. But, but here at least you can yeah. always say, well, this is what it used to look like. Or yeah. the patient says, oh, my tooth used to be much bigger. And he says, well, actually it used to be exactly like this. Yeah, this oh, is exactly what it was. was. That's yeah. a good point. It just takes up a little bit more memory, but you'll be okay with that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get away with it. Especially if you put it on the D drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The risk, I guess, is also if you pick a ginger mask, you can sometimes confuse it then. So, to yeah. say, so the biocopy is a safer option. Biocopy is safer then. Okay. Right, so we Let's found the upper arch, we found the camera. Out. You can see now with the latest update, the 5.2.2, is it? Uh, it starts in white, and then when you start scanning, it will go blue. So it doesn't line you quite so much. The other thing I'm going to say about this is obviously you've you know, you, you've gone over everything we talked about previously with um, the actual scan method. Uh, if you've been trained with it, the, the thing is, when you're going over a full arch scan, the thing to keep in mind is being methodical, okay? Now, obviously, different manufacturer scans will have their preference of scan, you know, confidence, pathway, what have you. Me personally, I like to do the occlusal and then it'll do the lingual or the lintel, and then I'll do the book, okay? And if I do it methodically that way, just like the scanning tool that we made, that you can download and you can print, okay? But that the scan training tool is really there to help you make sure you keep to a methodical path. So when you scan it, like I said, go over the occlusal first, so that the buckle and the lingual can merge together properly, okay? And the other things to keep in mind when you scan it is not go too fast and not go too slow. If you go too fast or too slow, then if you go too fast, it's going to lose areas. It's going to skip over, you're going to lose it. Yeah. If you go too slow, 
then it's going to create too much data, in which case it's more for it to process, it yeah. takes longer to make a model, and potentially it's going to end up filling your hard disk uh, quicker. Yeah, and potentially it could cause problems as well, because you just keep going back and rescanning something, it tries to refine it, then refine it, and it might just make it blur crazy. Or crash, or lose everything. everything. Especially with the Omnicam, if you're using that, it's got the same software, but it might struggle a little bit more really. Yeah. Um, I think also the, the main thing is start in a place where you're able to come back to it nicely because you may not have all seven teeth on that quadrant. So if you only got a few, make sure you start on a good tooth. Something like a, an occlusion of a premolar or a molar is going to be a, a very clear spot. Yeah. Uh, so the software can always come back to that because if you scan a bit and then you lose it, then you might struggle to find that area again. Uh, so like usual, we have the patient opening wide, Sitting up properly, nice and dry, the nurse has been there, a little bit of air, a little bit of suction, and then we're good to go. That's a really good point though, Patrick, is keeping it dry. Because yeah. if it's not dry, what's going to happen? It's going to be a fluid, it's going to reflect, mm -hmm. this fluid's going to sit in the margins, blood could be sitting in the margins, or any, you know, and, and, and the the fluid scan, it. scans so nicely, you would actually see a bubble of saliva on it, yeah. Yeah. which might look cool, but it's annoying if it's in the right, uh, wrong spot, really. Yeah. So. And it's going to fetch you with your crown margin later, so make sure it's dry, make sure you've got good moisture control, finger control is important, okay? So you're moving your finger around as you're taking your scan to really make sure that you create a very good scan for us later on, okay? So, we're going to scan, we're going to pick onto the playful side, and one thing is just to tell you is I would not look at the patient when you do the scan. Look at the screen. Yeah, look at the screen. Because if you look at the patient, you lose where you are, okay? So you know where it picks up the pink. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of pink mostly, isn't it? Yeah. So, you can see here how the camera has a really nice depth of field. Even if it keeps the camera away quite a bit from the teeth, you will still pick it up. And this is quite remarkable when you're doing something like a root canal, that you can scan right down, or a new plant crown, you can actually see the, the connection, the hex inside it, uh, which is very cool actually. Uh, so we've got remarkable detailing, very fast scan, uh, and it just stitches it together really nicely. So once we've scanned it, it might look perfect like this. We need to check it. Go back, this is where the touch screen is actually really nice. You can just easily move the whole thing around, check it from all different angles, to see if you've got any holes in the model, because you always want to have what's called a watertight model. If it's got holes in there, the software will fill that in, and that would be another biogeneric approximation, which is something we're trying to avoid. Uh, so at this stage, I would blow it up so it's big, I would go right in there, and then we spot a couple of little holes. Would that matter? Well, if you're doing the veneer here, it won't matter, but if you're doing the crown of the four, then it might matter because that's right in your contact area. So you've got to make sure, particularly around your preps, that you're getting a very accurate detailed scan with no undercuts, no bleeding. And if you do get a problem here, if it has been bleeding a little bit, you can just cut that area out and rescan that. So let's do it, Patrick. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So, so I click the settings button, click the cut button. Yep. And now this is one part that doesn't know me. I can't use the touchscreen for the cut. I, know, it's like I have to go to the touch pad and then I'll cut out that prep. You see here, when you're doing single clicks, it will create an arch shape. If you want to have a sharp corner, just double click and then it won't bend the line for you. So this could be really useful if you're doing something like going through a very tight contact. So then if you double click so you get a point, it will stay in that point and then you can just go straight across. So. Now when you click apply, you saw it went a bit jerky. The thing with the new versions of the software is you have to keep in mind sometimes when you do this cut, you have to be careful yeah. because the software is basically rendering everything in the meantime as you're doing it in real time, okay? And why does it do that? It does it so that we can then move to the next stage quicker. So in the background, we're scanning here, we're talking away. We're with the patient, we're talking to the patient. But you can see it says model there, so we can click to it, okay? Now, if we click there and it wasn't doing it, we'd have to wait for that to move around. Yeah, and it might really wait to take ages, so it's a really nice feature that it's doing it in the background, but you'll see how it constantly is adjusting it, especially if you have a big model with a lot of excess nonsense in there. Yeah. And then 
as you crop that away, it's still working on it, and sometimes it's best to just give it a chance to settle a bit and do that, yeah. because it's doing so many calculations in the background that you don't really want to upset things. Yeah. So what that has done now is it's cut that bit out. What we need to remember also is that that's basically taking a shotgun to your model, isn't it? So yeah. that's taking that section away. Yeah. If your model was tilted a bit and you did that cut, you would have actually taken a bit out from the other side as well. So let's try it, Patrick. Let's try it. So if you go to that side and cut a bit out of, say, the next tooth, you might look like you're just taking a bit of the two, but, ooh, you will take a big chunk out. No, all no. the way across there. That's the shotgun effect in so. Yeah. So we need to rescan that. Now the beautiful thing is that you can pretty much delete everything there and still go back to the bit that's still there and scan the rest. And you can use that. Yeah. So say you were doing a smart design, then you can use this feature to then scan the bite if you don't even have occlusion left, okay? You take the upper jaw as the bite that's the, I mean, obviously you're gonna use lap software with this, so it doesn't matter which way around the frame is, but you take your normal upper jaw with the pre-prep, you take your lower jaw with the pre-prep, you take your buckle with the pre-prep, and then you take a new scan with a few of the teeth that are remaining and the preps so that everything's matched in and everything's in the same plane yeah. and even though there's nothing touching anymore you have the uh, the occlusion there because it's tied to that first scan yeah. but you have to make sure there's enough data for the for the software to keep those frames tied together properly and what do i mean tied together so it doesn't end up with one here one here and we're trying to merge them together, okay? So, but these settings, more, you know, they more still in the right position now, even though we've completely cut the model here, yep. and it just moves, and when Adam starts scanning again now, it will just merge those bits together. Yeah. And if there was any movement, there won't be on this one, obviously, but if there had been any changes, you know, that would just come in. So, just fits it in seamlessly, and fix it up really quickly. There we go. Ignoring the fact that we have a little bit of a hole on that eight, but on the other hand, we see now that we have a really nice scan in the area where we're going to do our crap. And that's good. Yeah. So we don't need to do the others because we don't have them. Now, if we took a lower, it wouldn't let us move forward yeah. without the buckle. But we don't have a lower, so it's going to let us do it. So we're going to click model. So again, for the lines, creating the model is pretty quick nowadays in terms of making the model and if you've got more than one scan like we said before it's creating all these in the background so when you move on to this screen if you've got an upper and a lower and a bio copy it will probably just be working on the upper by the time you get to this stage really yeah uh, i think that's a nice feature and we get a little preview uh, the number of patients that see this screen and say oh that's my teeth that's yeah. so clever isn't it and then the next screen when it really pops up they go oh hey my teeth <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to watch this anymore. Really <laughs> but they love this stage. Yeah. I think the other thing is to keep in mind that when you know when people see things in 3D, then it's always worth having a background distraction. So, you know, here we have the screen this side as well as this side, and we, we always have some deep house playing and you know beautiful videos. Beautiful beaches, beautiful, you know, beautiful people, yeah. yeah. But um, you know, my place in Patrick's our real practice is Manchester and Cambridge. You know, we've got screens on the ceiling, and we play the same things. But um, yeah. you know, there's different ways of doing it for Sometimes different it's, you know, it's, it's taking ages. Yeah. You know, and you think, has that crashed? And sometimes they do crash because yeah. it's got a PC inside it. So occasionally, you might have to go back and rescan something or restart something. So particularly if you're doing a bigger case where you have a big pre-op and you've really got to make sure you have that bite in place. Just hit the save button and keep that saved and then you know come back to that every so often because it's nothing worse than you having cut all the teeth and then you think, ooh, but it's gone. <laughs> yeah. That's when you want to fall back on your previous uh, previously saved. Yeah. So now it's doing this thing where it's saying I'm still working, I'm just looking risky busy, so it's now setting the model axis, even though the model It's doing the things great. that you're gonna redo later on. Yeah. But it's pretty much done it. Yeah. So it's kind of another sort of Patrick. It's a sort of. It but sort of does the axis. In 80% of the cases, particularly for a single crown, it's sort of pretty probably much probably won't need to change the insertion axis. 
Uh, and if you've got a nice tidy prep like this, it will give you a really nice proposal for the, uh, for the module. So most of the time, if your prepping is reasonably accurate, you won't really need to do much in terms Especially of... Especially if you use retraction core. Or yeah. if you really, you know, if you keep super gingival. We try and keep super gingival with everything where we can because there's no metal component, so you're going to have a really nice color and it will blend in perfectly and your fit will be so spot on that you don't need to hide that margin anymore. You can leave it, you know, a millimeter off and it will still not show. Uh, but of course, if you're worried, you can use the laser to trough a little bit or you can use the retraction cord or Exposil or Traxodent paste. You know, there's plenty of different options there. I quite like to use paste if I have to do anything. If yeah. it's a bigger case, maybe laser. My schematic paste expands is, is, yeah. is definitely a good thing for a scanner, especially if you've got near the gum and it's bleeding a lot. It's got to be dry, and sometimes that's the biggest struggle, really, because you know, with, with an impression material, you can force the material underneath the gum line and you can compress it, and then it pushes the soft tissue away, but you just won't get that. Uh, because this is an optical scan, so what you see is what you get. If it's not a direct line of vision for the camera, then it won't show up here, so keep that in mind. Yeah.